morning I'm going to do another class again, being a Friday morning now, I'm having to do the morning rather than the afternoon this time, and I'm going to be showing you uh, how to use water with pastels. Most people don't realise that uh, you can use pastels with water, just like watercolour, except that they're a thicker medium, they're a more opaque medium that way. I mean, basically watercolour is the pigment mixed with gum arabic, and um, pastels are very much the same. They're pigment bound with gum arabic, but a stronger pigment, and they will melt down. Once water has been used with the pastels, they're fixed. So we're going to put these first coats on, and they'll be fixed with the water as a foundation, as a ground, and then uh, we'll be able to work over them and put details on and use brushes as well to put those details in. And it's quite a versatile way of working, which I think you'll quite enjoy. And hopefully the students will as well. All right, good morning, ladies. Here we are again. <laughs> and we'll come down to the paper. So we're going to be using water and pastel. And <clears throat> traditionally, we start from the sky. I usually, in my acrylics and oils, start from the horizon line. Why? Because it's about, usually, it's about the mid-tone. <clears throat> and I like to work from my middle outwards in my paintings. So I'll go from the middle tones to go brighter and darker, sorry, brighter and brighter, darker and darker, and finish with the darks and finish with the highlights. In this case, we're not going to paint the tree first, are we? Because we've got to paint the sky between the little branches then. So logically, we're going to paint the sky first and all of these light areas and finish that sky, and then we're going to put the tree and stuff over the top. I know it sounds simple, but these are logical things that some people forget when they're beginning. So we'll just guide you through that. Now, rather than put the um, water on first and the pastel into the water, I'm going to put the pastel on first and then blend it with the water. If I put the water on first and then the pastel, it takes a lot of pastel and it goes extremely strong. It's better the other way around. And because we've got a fairly smooth paper, we're using a knot, but we're using the other side of it in this case, um, it shouldn't be too textural. So I'll take a nice big wash brush, first of all, one of my oval mops. We've got three brushes today, so we're going to share them. Get it wet. And again, um, have it ready. Now, what colours am I going to want here? I'm going from very pale... This is where you're going to come in now, because you can, I can't see those colours, Pete. Um, mm. uh, I've got a very pale pink here. On that horizon, that the light, if you look higher up, it's almost just pure white, isn't it, into cream. But down in that horizon, it's slightly pink, just slightly. I'm going to exaggerate this colour slightly, and I'm going to make that slightly pink as I come up, pink grey, through in. I'm not going to put the whites on yet, I'll put the whites on afterwards, because they'll come at the end. And I'm going to come up to my turquoisey blues, and then into a slightly warmer blue. And we're going to put the lights over the top. Now remember, with an opaque colour, unlike watercolour, we can put darks over lights, we can put lights over darks. We can't with watercolour, can we? Because we've, we've got to leave the lights behind, haven't we? With this, much safer, like acrylics, much easier. We can make any mistakes up by going over the top. We can change anything, and it's going to be much more versatile. So I'm not going to paint down here yet. I'm just going to paint um, up here. And I'm going to start with, a very, start up with this very pale pink here quite light, a bit messy at the minute because they haven't been used for a while. I'm just going to bring that right the way through. Now they are slightly transparent, although they're opaque paints, they are slightly transparent when I put the water on. Even, even like that you can just see the drawing through look. So I'm not totally losing where my tree is. And I'm going to come up and let's have a look for a sort of nice turquoisey blue. This one possibly. I'm going to come up into that. Just lightly, just scumbling over, because all I want is to use this pigment in a minute. Right through to here, using the edge of the pastel, side of the pastel. I take the papers off my pastels, because if you start, if you leave the papers on, everybody starts going like that and doing little dots and dashes. Take the sides off so you can work bigger. You'll see this later when we do pastels with the old traditional English block and blend method, where we actually use the pastel straight on and blending and then blocking afterwards. We go slightly stronger. That blue, a little bit, little bit warmer. Now, remember what I said about warm and cools? Warm fire, reds, warmer, cooler, more acid blue. Then we we'll go right up into a warmer blue up here. This is a very warm blue up here. Much more of an ultramarine. Right up into there. And I'm going to go back to that <coughs> turquoise blue again. I'll use this one this time. And just blend that up into there. Now, let's see what happens when we put the water on. This usually gobsmacks people. They say, oh, wow, I didn't realise that. Now, I'm not going to work for my darks and my lights because I want to blend my lights in. I don't want to, to, to soil the brush, if you like. But you see how you can just blend them in together, look. 
and I'm going to come right up and through. All I want is a gentle, less about watercolour, a gentle blending of the colours with water. And when this dries it's going to fix and I can make it as strong as I like. So I'm coming up into the water now. You see the lovely effects we can get? It's just like watercolour in a way, isn't it? And you wouldn't believe you could do that with, with pastel. Now we can go stronger whenever we like. If I want to come into that, use our fingers, we can actually get going into this now. Take some of this colour here. <coughs> And see how strong it is when I put it on with the water look. Yeah? Much, much stronger, isn't it? And we can use the brush, or we can use our fingers, and you can actually start to blend and manipulate. And you can imagine the textures now we can get down here in the grasses in a moment, yeah? Let's speak now, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> I'm going to actually blend that right down into the pink. I'm going to make the pink slightly muddier down here, because I want a little bit more, more grey down into there. <clears throat> It looks a mess at first, but you're going to see how, it, how we go on. That's very deep, very deep blue here now. And add some more of that up to the very top here. Put that back in there. Try not to drop the passes on the floor if you can help it, because, oh, that's getting a bit, just a bit more water there. It's got a bit, uh, paper's lifted a bit there. So I haven't used this paper for this job, so this is interesting to see how it goes. Right, looks a bit of a mess, but that's giving us a basic foundation when that dries. Going to come down now to the horizon here. And I'm going to use a bit of this same blue. I'm pushing the colour slightly because this is a stronger blue. It's almost a blue like this one up here. So in the distance here, I'm going to just put a little bit of that blue all the way along here, right the way through to there, all the way through there, even across there. And just use my brush again. Not too much water, just enough to, to, to let it uh, blend in here, right the way down to there. That comes right the way through the back there. I can just bring it out. So I can paint with I take it off here and put it somewhere else. I can bring it down to here if I wanted. So you can paint with the pastel, literally paint with pastel with, with water like this. Right, then we're going to go a little bit warmer. It comes up slightly bluey grey green here. I'm going to take this one <coughs> all the way along. You can just see the pencil marks through it still, look, you see, so I know where I am still. <coughs> all the way along here, just blend that in. Comes right the way down. Into, into these trees here. <clears throat> Again, take some water and just blend it up into those blues. <clears throat> now I'm going to go warmer still. We want a slightly um, greyer uh, brown. That's what's up this one. That's better yet. Slightly greyer brown. And into that, all the way through here to these trees. So I'm going from cool to gradually warmer, aren't I? Unless it's a sunset or a sunrise, it's warmer here in the foreground, it's cooler in the distance. We'll start to get some <coughs> warm greys. Now this is much warmer than that one, look. It's browner, you see. This is a warmer grey, so we'll start to bring these trees in here. I'm right up into there, and I'm actually working into the wet paint now as well, and using the, the pastel a bit like a tree, in other words, just making marks that are about the tree, look. So I come up into there. I'm going to stop here, so you can catch up with me. Get a bit more warmth just across here at the moment. And I can use the water again, with the brush, to get the tree effects. Just pushing the brush up into it, look. We're starting to get the, that line of trees already. Just coming right down and through here. I'm going to put the greens back in in a moment, so I'll just put these browns in all the way down here. We're going to put the lights back in and the darks in later. Right down through there, I can brush it down all the way through here, down to these trees here. A little bit stronger down here. <coughs> There's a line of hedge along here I want to do. There's some more trees going in there. We'll just bring those down thinly. So we're using it in between watercolour and pastel. I've had people say, oh, it's not like watercolour. No, it's pastel and water. But it's the same sort of technique. It isn't watercolour. It isn't transparent. We know that. Let's not get pedantic. People get very, very pernickety on, on YouTube sometimes. Right, I'm going to stop at that. And I want you guys now to have a go at just doing what I've just done there, okay? I haven't... I've lost a coat. It's much stronger when you put the water on than you think. Yeah. This is only Try a base coat, just a foundation. Did you do some drying? She now has a blue then? nose because she just wiped her nose with her finger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. We're putting a dark line now, don't you? Yes, it's a deep... Right, you've all done really well on that, so I'm just about to go on to the next stage now of the, the greens at the front. 
We're going to go on now to the greens down here. Now I'm going to use my darker colours first and put the lighter over the top in a minute. I need a little bit of both. Um, and let's see a mid-green. I want to start with sort of greyer, muckier greens in mind. I don't want to go straight to a strong green. So I'm going to use... What's that? That's a blue rather than a green. Try and find the greys first. I think it's a little bit of this grey again here. All the way down through here. Because I want to mix my greens. <clears throat> Now remember that green is one of those colours, like all colours, that can have different hues. What was a hue? Tint. A hint. A tone. A, a, a warm and cool. A warm and yeah. cool. So it can be a warmer green or a cooler green. This is fairly warm, but it's, it's, it's bluer than that green in the background, which is more yellow and, and lighter. So I'm going to just bring this through here, just very lightly first of all. And... I'm going to use that to, to, to blend in some green immediately, quite dark greens. I'm just going to let that come through. You see how thinly I'm using it because we've already seen how much stronger the, um, the, the paint goes once we actually <coughs> bring that green all the way through there, the base green, just through the back here as well. I want to be a little bit stronger in places so I'm going to take a stronger green here and just let that come in in spots and dashes. It's quite a dark area here that's actually quite warm. Already you can see the landscape coming even when they're doing that. Um, up here through here, this is this dark bit here, little dots and dashes there. It's a bit warmer, so I want to get some warmer colours into there. Let's see what we got there. Um, that's the cooler as well. Let's take some blue down here. Let's put a little bit of blue just, just along that bit there. <clears throat> little bits, see these little dark bits? I want to start getting those in here and there. Already I'm just working that up. Now this is quite sort of quite brown there, purpley brown. I'm going to take a little bit of as a purple, because it was my deep purple, here we are. I'm going to put a little bit of that purple, it might seem strange, but see how warm that goes there, look now. Mm -hmm. Is that the camera still on? Yeah. So I'm making that quite warm just there. And there's some of this warmth going on into the background here. I'm going to bring up little, little dots and dashes here as well at the minute. It's going to do with my brush in a moment. These little trees, look, I'm going to start actually putting some of these details into a little bit. I'm even going to mark in this tree here a minute, just so I know where I am. But look how thinly you can go. And watch my mark, how I make that mark about the tree. I'm making that twiddly, twisty mark at this stage, yeah? My marks are about the object I'm doing straight away. Little dots and dashes into there, just to get these bits of grass in between. Right the way through here. Right now, I need the brush and some water, please. <coughs> <laughs> knock it over between you, that's it. <laughs> and again, I start with a lighter colour, so this green up here, just going to blend that in. Fair amount of water. Bring it into those trees. Always making marks about what we're painting. Tree shapes, whatever. See how dark it goes, but remember this is going to get lighter when it dries. One of my favourite faces is lighter later. If it gets mucky, I've got to come back here, I want it to be a bit cleaner. So I haven't worried about going over the tree too much there. I just want a, a basic foundation in at the moment. So I'm going to whip in, oops, should, didn't mean to do that on the, on the sky, but it won't matter because I can paint it out later. And you can see all these little dark bits now are just starting to make a, a bit more texture in the grass. All mucky, all dark, but it's just given us that coating. Let's see if I can just lift those off. There we go. Like that. Now I can work into this. Now I'm going to get some other brushes out now. Um, remember those rake brushes we used? Rake brushes, we're going to use these in here. Even if I just take one immediately and do this, you can see the grass effects we can get straight away. And more of that texture is going to happen in the foreground than the background. Now if I then, while this is still wet, if I take some of these <coughs> deeper greens and I start to make these marks into here and use that brush wet I can blend that instead of blending it across I'm actually working it in so we're starting to get the effect of that feel straight away so that's your next stage I won't rush on too far whilst you're doing yours I'm going to carry on doing the, the textures on here okay so I'm just going to take this brush so I'll leave those there put that I'll just keep that in my hand a minute because I'm still using that. Um, whilst you have a go at putting the greens in, alright? 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you have to share the pictures a minute or share mine. Mm -hmm. work between using the fan brush and the pastels and the mop so that I get a constant change of... So I'm working over the wet paper now here. And I can blend this all in. And as you quite correctly said earlier, Pippi, you can work these lights against the darks a lot more if you want to, as I'm doing here now. But I am aware that um, it's going to go lighter when it dries, so yeah. I'm not too worried. Um, very deep blue down here. And you can use, I use my finger in it too, look to just make the effects and textures there. Use your finger as well as the pastel up into here, and it's just dark here. And the landscape is starting to make to take shape already. A bit of deeper blue down here, and that purple. Use the brush to tickle in like this, the tip, and I can use my fan brush as well. The sky is on mine is virtually dry, so I'm going to start working back onto that. Okay, I'm going to now work on the sky because that's drier, and we're going to start putting in these, these mid greys and so on. Um, now, this is where I want fresh pastel. We've deadened it at the moment. Les has been painting on my painting. <coughs> now, we've deadened it at the moment because um, we put that water onto it. But I want to start bringing back fresher colours. So, let's see what I can do. If I come up to here and I use this pastel. This is why I want smooth paper. Very gently, I can just start to put in fresh, glowing pastel over the tops of this slightly. I'm just using the edge of the pastel. It doesn't help with the paper being slightly cockled at the moment, but that'll be all right. I'm going to just bring it through this colour here, look, and to drag it through. So we're glazing, if you like, using pastel. We're glazing with it. We're just letting it come through the other colour. So gently that's coming over the top of that colour. Just gently glazing it through. There's the ender colour still there. If I go back to my lovely deep colour here, I can do the same. I can bring that back again. Remember, we're looking under bright light and we're looking very closely at it, so it will look much better when we get it from a distance. So bring one backwards and forwards over the other. Now you see the difference in that fresh pastel. If I do blending slightly, you see how it kills it immediately. We lose, we get some nice soft effects, but we lose that beauty of the, of the fresh pastel. So I'm working in between both the the blending and the and the fresh pastel here, right down there. Right, I want to get more of that. I'm going to use this one next down to here. Bring that right through down there. So how much pastel you actually put on in the first place is up to you with the water. If you didn't want more of this white showing, then you put more on. But I'm losing a lot of that white paper now. I don't want any of that white paper showing really. You can actually stretch pastel paper. It is possible to do it uh, with water and the tape method I just told you about. I want a bit, little bit more pink going over there, a little bit more purple. Um, so I want some of this colour just coming lightly across my sky, I'm just using it ever so gently. A little bit more glow into this up here. There's a slight, for me, a slight tint of, go in different directions, a slight tint of purple. And we're using an impressionist technique now of broken colour. So I've got one colour literally showing across another. You see the lovely effect we get? Now coming down, yes Pete, okay. And then we get to, we come to um, these greys. Let's all look now. We're starting, I'm starting to work on these greys down here a little bit more now. And they're coming across. So I'm going to start putting the greys of these fluffy clouds in, leaving the blues in between. Only use those, those few colours at the moment up into these clouds. This is, we're doing this bit here now, that bit up there, little bits of grey. Use my finger occasionally to blend if I need to. It's quite grey down into here. It's going to soften the thing. I could use water as well, but I don't want to anymore. I've finished with my water now. I shouldn't be using, or hard to be using water at all until I come to that tree. I'm going to show you about that in a minute. I'm just letting these, these pink colours just glow through here, just gently. Just gently scumbling it over the top. Scumbling is when you um, use a dry brush or you just take the pastel lightly over the top like this. So I'm going across underneath these clouds at the minute. A bit up here, through there, up into here. I'm going to just 
blend those up and then pushing it in quite hard now. Right up and through. Now is where the fun starts. We've got a white here. Um, I'm going to start putting in and let her look how the colour glows through. So where I want a thicker, lighter bit of cloud, I push harder. When I want it just slightly greyer, I'm using the pastel a lot softer look. And look at how this lovely sky just suddenly appears. It's like magic, isn't it lovely? Because we've worked from our, our undercoats, our undercolours through, just letting that colour glow through there. If I want it a bit stronger, I'll work a bit harder, look. Right through, just making cloud marks. See how I'm twisting my hand? Constantly twisting my hand to get the, the shape of these clouds. Right up and through. You see how hard I'm pushing there? Because that pastel actually came off, didn't it? Mm. Right through to the pinks here. That, that nice bit of light cloud coming up there. I'm going to push a bit harder there. I want lighter cloud coming up through here. I'm just making these shapes where it's, where it's lighter, I'm pushing harder. Where it's not so light, I'm being a bit lighter. And it's like magic, it all comes together. There's a light cloud coming through here now. We've got that pink still glowing. And suddenly that sky appears. It's right through the tree there, don't worry about that. Hard, I'm pushing again. Now I want to actually. I've got white there, but what I want is a very light cream as well. Um, there's a little bit more sunshine going on in here, so I'm going to do a little bit of cream just into there, just to get the sunlight coming through. I like to push the colours out a bit because photographs tend to bleach out slightly. So a little bit more sunshine in my painting there. And I'd be happy enough with that sky almost, it's almost there what I want. It's a little bit more cloud here. Got a bit of cloud just wisping through here and there. But that will work well enough once I get the rest in. Okay, fun? Right, your turns. I'll put a little bit more pink back into my clouds here, just down the bottom, because I've lost a bit of that. Just to get that glow down there. Okay, I move on with mine, and I'm going to now just go into more detail here with these different greys and greens back here. We've done the basics with the brush, but I want to actually work into these and get more of these tree effects now. So I'm just working directly quite heavily making about the, making the marks about the trees here. I need to go a bit stronger with the purples back here. Just scumbling it in places. Remember what scumbling was just now, using my finger to take it back and just making these tree shapes that are a little bit warmer with a bit of deep purple here amongst these greys. Back into the distance, just little touches and dashes where the marks are, so that is this little area here. And not being exact, all I'm doing is an, an impression. I'm working about the thing. I'm just being an impressionist at the moment. And I'll work more and more detailing as I go along. It gets the warms. This is a much cooler dark. I'm just bringing up these trees so that this works against them and brings them out. The deeper greens going on around those trees. You see, this is light here, but to make that light stand out, I've got to go dark around them. So I can put light on, but I can also go dark around something to make it stand out. It's just starting to take shape. I mean, we're looking really closely at these pictures. When we see them from more of a distance, you're going to go the wow again, the wow factor again. There's bits of that mid-green in amongst this. And so the pastel is getting heavier and heavier. And you can see that if we'd used pastel from the start, we might find it getting almost too dark now. And I'm going to start blending over here a little bit, getting the texture of the grasses. I've got those lines behind the trees. Find these little spots and shapes. You're not being exact, but you are, um, Will, making the marks about the thing that we're doing. Let's really start to make this sing now. So I've gone from my darks to my mid-tones. Now let's start to really make it sing. And look, wow, how it works, yeah? It's beautiful, isn't it? And we can really make the work sing out now. With the light going on behind. And when I put those flowers in in a moment, we'll see those as well. So the pictures suddenly just sort of happen. Could you pass me that yellow there, please? That one. that one top. If I now come to these little flowers, 
And look how that painting, you know, it's 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 nearly it's nearly there already, isn't it? And we've worked through our different how yellow that green is, but now we're putting this yellow in. So I've done this before and kind of filmed the whole nothing, nothing's there. Yeah. Um, now that is a nice bright yellow, but there's some more orangey yellows amongst these as well. So I need to find that bit more orange. The yellow's down in the field here. Look at that brings it out, look, mm. you see? Little bits like that, these highlights that can suddenly bring your picture out. But I want a more orangey yellow, so I want this one here. Because this means deeper oranges amongst it. And look at that difference. You see the other yellow now looks cooler, doesn't it? Mm. So it's quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right, where you go again then? Mm -hmm. right, I'm just going to work on this tree a moment and show you how we can do that with a brush. Going on now to this tree, I'm going to use three colours, the deep green and the very deep blue and the purple. And what I'm going to do first of all is to just work out this tree as finely as I can with the pastel but I can't go very finely unless I actually sharpen the pastel. Now this is where the um, harder pastels can come in because they are easier to sharpen and get to a point but equally they tend to tear the paper. So do you use pencils? You can use pastel pencils too for very fine work but again all pastel pencils are quite hard. Mm. So now I want to show you that business in a minute of how we can use those great brushes to get the effect of this. Quite fun. I'm going to go to that very, very deep blue and come up through here and do some of these darks with that deep blue as well. So we're going to get the light against the dark, the warm against the cool, and now the rough against the smooth. Right, if I take, I've got two fine brushes here. If I take first of all this one, just pick up the paint on that. I can get it mixed on here. I can start to paint out some of these branches. I use the rigger, the same, but a bit more. I really want to get quite dark on here. We can use the rigger to do the same. You see how that works? Mm. It's quite fun, isn't it? Always reaching towards the light. Branches reaching up towards the light. Let's work back into this a bit then, this tree. It does stop paint. Yes, well that's how, that's why she's here really, because she, she's you know, one of my students, and apart from more recent students, right. she got on really well, and uh, she's quite good, she, she's, she's lacking confidence, but she's done really well with me actually. Um, so is she going to paint while she's here? She might, she might well. She's certainly joining next week's lesson. Oh, that'll be fun. I'm now just working up all my details and highlights with different strokes and dots and dashes to try and get the feeling of this field. Black is something that I hardly ever use. I might at the very end of a painting just to bring some darks out, but um, we try to use deep colours and light colours rather than white or black all the time. But just occasionally I'll put a bit of dark in, a bit of black in. Here I'm going to use a little bit of black just in the foreground of this tree, just to bring these branches out a fraction darker against the light. One or two bits of dark in the foreground here too, because it's a very warm dark. This is almost a very deep brown I'm using here now. Do you use Payne's Grey? Payne's Grey is virtually a mixture of black and Prussian blue. Yeah. So again, it makes things sooty. Right. Um, some artists do use it with a limited palette quite successfully in watercolour. Um, but I'm not very keen on the colour. Uh, Prussian blue, uh, indigo, yes, indigo is a, a dark colour that I use quite a bit in watercolour for, for very dark, very, very useful. And for me, my own pictures, 
virtually done as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I don't want to go much tighter than that. And when we see these from a distance with less, a less stronger light, I think we'll be quite pleased with them. That's it, Leslie. You see how those shapes are working now? Your trees are starting to happen. Mm. Um, we've got the very light greens to do, and uh, the tree. Go for the tree next. Let's get that tree done, and then we'll look at the, the, the foreground more in a moment. You can do the grass, and you can either do the foreground grass or you can do the tree. It's up to you. Tree's back. Right, I think you've every reason to feel pleased with what you've done today because I think you've done very, very well for your first ever goes on these. I think this is excellent. All of you have done well in your own ways. So, there's another lesson then in water and pastel. And look over the top, please, Leslie. No cheating. <laughs> come on, out you come. Come on, over the top, Leslie. Put it down a bit, please. There we are. Can't <laughs> see it properly. I am. And did you all enjoy that, and then, ladies, this time? Yes. You've really done well, haven't you, this time? So, next week, then, for our viewers, we're going to be doing acrylics.